Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. Today we have, it's a little bit of a different video and not everyone's gonna appreciate that, but. This video is for us. This is something that we've been wanting to do for our own personal record. I've been wanting to make this video for a while. It's true, she asked me, when are we gonna make this video for? It's been probably a year, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of this is for our friends and family, um, maybe Facebook and personal, but you know, part of photography, videography, documenting life, which is what this channel is about, frankly, it's about documenting things that matter. And this is probably, what we wanna share with you today is probably the thing that matters most to us right now in our life and it's an important part of who we are. So, well, not everyone will appreciate it because it's not about a Fuji camera or a, you know, some street photography technique. Uh, hopefully what we share with you today will, will mean something to you. But with that in mind, we're gonna share with you, we're gonna interview each other, I guess, and we're gonna share our foster slash adoption experience. People in the, in the comments always ask why we have so many kids and oh, this will help answer that question. <laughs> Anything else you want to say before we uh, dive into the actual video? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Well, yeah. hope you enjoy. What do you remember from Adoption Day? What was it like? Mm, I remember Adoption Day really clearly. It's one of those days that you don't forget. Where are we going today? We are going um, um, uh, to a tour. To the court? Yeah. Why are we going to the court? Because we'll have adoption day. Um, you can be my adoption day, baby daughter. Yeah. Can it be your my baby daughter today? Where are we going today, guys? We're doing another tour. The court. What are we gonna do at the court? Um, play. I can't see Alex. No, not, We're not playing. playing. We're just sitting. What are we gonna do there, though? We're gonna be sit and be quiet. And what's gonna happen? The court has to say these. Alex, do you these, want these? Um, children are now yours. No. It's not the, the same. judge is gonna say that, huh? Yeah. Yay. I remember walking into the courtroom with my kids' hands in my hand and um, the excitement. And there was a sense of um, excitement in the room and support from our family members and friends there. Do you remember what the judge asked the kids? If they would be siblings, if they would take care of each other. Are you going to treat them just like a sister and a brother? Mm -hmm. And be nice to them? Yeah. Yeah, most of the time. And share things with them? Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. That's going to make it official. I remember the judge asked us what the kids' relationships with us were like. But I remember our answer just being, we can't really remember life without these two. Yeah, it's hard to imagine being a whole family without them. Right. Which was, you know, I think pretty amazing for a year later to, mm -hmm. to feel that way. Right. And that was a truly wonderful experience. Um, but as wonderful as it was, a week later we were able to make those same promises and commitments at the spiritual level and gain the reassurance that those are commitments and bonds that we can have even beyond the grave. Why did you do foster care? Well, I mean, we'd had our, our three biological children and uh, for me it was a desire to continue to give. I felt like we had more to give. I, I understand that three biological children, especially this day and age, People look at that and think that's already like, you guys are nuts, that's a lot. <laughs> and it is, absolutely. But on the other hand, I felt like we had more to give. I felt like our, our, our home had more space in it, literally and figuratively, mm -hmm. that we had more love to give. We were strong enough in our relationship, not that our relationship was perfect, um, but that our relationship was strong enough that we could, we could enlarge in those walls. Um, didn't think it would happen as soon as it did. What are we doing? You're sitting on this new chair they made you. Hmm, why am I doing that? This looks like a very comfortable chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> what? This chair is alive! Whose idea was this? <laughs> but yeah, definitely knew that that's just what I wanted to do. What about you? Yeah, I knew we wanted to expand our family 
in that adoption would be the way we did it. And if foster care took 10, 15, 20 years to expand our family, um, that eventually it would happen that way. And same as you, that we felt like we had more, more room in our hearts, more room in our house. What was it like um, the first time you met him? Oh, they probably thought I was crazy because I cried for like the first <laughs> three days. I was just <laughs> sobbing. Mommy was crying. Why was mommy crying? I just knew that they had had a hard road. Mm -hmm. And so I was sad for them, but I was happy for them and happy for me. My eyes so frustrated. You're so frustrated? So I sobbed and they... I don't, I've asked them, do you remember how much mommy cried when <laughs> you first met her? And they don't really remember, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard on your biological children to bring in two new additional children? Oh, I, I mean, absolutely. I think it's no, nothing about it is easy other than, well, I guess that's not true. There are certain things about it that are wonderful and very easy, but taken as a whole, it's it can be a difficult experience and that can be hard on us as parents, but especially on, you know, the biological children we already had. Um, they have to make room, they have to widen that circle of love uh, for two new additions and, and that can be painful, you know, that stretching that occurs, it, you have to open your heart a little bit more. But I think there's two perspectives or two ways to look at that. You could see that as unfair and traumatic to biological children you have, or you could see that as an opportunity for them to grow, to gain more um, unselfish love and, and charity, and, um, and an opportunity for them to, to live a life of service right from the beginning. I think our, our kids have absolutely learned that, um, 100%. Not that they're always perfect or always wonderfully unselfish, but they see, they see our additions as absolute members of the family um, who they love as much as any other member of the family. And I think that's amazing, amazing to see the capacity that children have to love. The thing that really helped with all of that was the additional help and the outpouring of love we got from close friends and family that, that came in to strengthen that circle. For me, it's hard to think of how much more difficult this would have been for all of us had it not been for that unquestioning acceptance that they all gave us. It really would have been easy for many to judge us and kind of question the, the wisdom of the decisions we were making and to hold back their love. But I don't think we experienced that from anyone really, and that is something that really can't be overstated, how important that was. How long was it before you knew you wanted to adopt Alex and Lucy? Day two. <laughs> oh, that was my, I was like immediately. Yeah, immediately. It wasn't even day two for you. No, it was the day of. And what made you so sure? Um, I just knew when I saw them, yeah. I just knew they were ours. Hmm. I'm totally crying. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads to a follow-up question, which is, you know, there's a lot of uh, families that, that don't get to keep their foster kids. And, and you know, in fact, it's, it's your job as a foster parent to, to try to work towards unification with their natural and biological parents, which that process can be heart-wrenching for many parents who don't get to keep their kids. So what advice do you have for people thinking about getting into it, knowing that that's a possibility? Right, um, so you kind of have to go into foster care with the thought of this is for them, this is completely for the kids, I'm gonna give them all the love I can while I can and every day is a treasure and I remember those first days, months, until just you, you learn to treasure time more. You never know what tomorrow will bring. So it kind of puts life into perspective. Before you knew that you were going to get to adopt them, did you worry that you wouldn't be able to? Um, I, I'm the type of person that considers all outcomes and tries not to get too emotionally set on something. I always go through the worst case scenario and, and plan, you know, just, you know, how am I going to handle this if I, if it doesn't go the way that we hope it will. Um, and so I think I was as ready as could be expected, but I had a lot of hope. I had a lot of, um, you know, call it spiritual awareness of what may come or 
whatever you might want to call that, I, I, felt, uh, I felt pretty good that it would happen and uh, a lot of comfort, a lot of reassurance that, that um, we would we'd be able to be together as a family. I don't think I ever felt fear mm -hmm. <laughs> per se that it, good. that it wouldn't happen. So at what point did you start looking at your foster children, your adoptive children with the same amount of love as you did your other children? Yeah, that's that's a really good question, and um, it, I mean, honestly, I have to be honest, it did take a while. It was, it, you know, when your own child is is having a little bit of a meltdown or a tantrum, or if they're a little bit whiny or in public if they're acting up, you have a lot more forgiveness and love for them than you do somebody else's kid. I mean, we've all been in that mm -hmm. situation in a shopping mall or on an airplane when somebody's kid is having a meltdown, and it's really hard on us. It's hard on a parent too, but it's less because they have that built-in love. And and when children come into your home, you you can't just turn on a switch and instantly love them like that. Fortunately, that's absolutely now I can say unequivocally that uh, I have just as much love, absolutely the same amount of love um, for for our adopted kids as, as our, our biological kids. I don't see them as different in that regard at all anymore. Right. So that was a long answer, but to be specific, I would say it was probably around a year. What about you? Um, you love people easier than I do. <laughs> oh, I felt more empathy and love um, than I expected to, sooner than I expected to. Um, it was probably the day that we got to tell them that we were gonna adopt them that I just felt like all the walls came down where we didn't have to protect our hearts. Mm, yeah. Um, but the moment we knew that they were staying with us forever is probably when those walls came down and we were just able to love completely. So in, in your case, you felt like it was actually you holding back, not necessarily, you know. Yeah, not necessarily like a, the, the like, connection or the bond, but more so um, that fear in the back of my mind that yeah. they might not stay. Right. So. What have been the worst parts of the experience for you? worst experiences you have to forgive like i think forgiving the wrongs that were done to your children and you had no control because they weren't yours at the time the experiences that they've had like i guess i have had had a lot of anger feelings that i need to get over and forgive people that have wronged these innocent kids like all foster kids <laughs> but I also think that their experiences, that they'll be able to use them for good. They're survivors, they're warriors, and they've changed my heart forever. My oldest adopted son came taking care of his younger sister. Alex learned how to take care of somebody else at a really young age, and he's a really big heart. And I think we could easily just focus on the hardships, but I think that uh, the, the lowers get lower, <laughs> and but the highers also get higher. Uh, your capacity for joy and love absolutely can increase. And I think that's, that's really what life is about, right? I mean, if we don't take some risks, if we don't open our hearts and allow ourselves to love, what's the, your mom always says something about love. Uh, the one who loves the most is the lucky one. That's right, yeah, and I think yeah. that's true in this case for sure. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, they are so lucky. They got you as parents and got to be part of your family, and I always think we're the lucky ones. <laughs> Sorry.